Sometimes it's the most trivial discussions that open unexpected windows onto the human condition. That's what happened to me after receiving several objections for claiming that the terminal is fundamental in Linux systems. It's old, they said. It's complicated. It's no longer necessary. And yet on reflection, this resistance reveals something deeper than a simple technical debate. When we use a graphical interface, we navigate a space designed by others. We click icons, drag windows, follow paths laid out for us. It's a valid experience, immediate, often pleasant. The terminal, on the other hand, offers a different paradigm, that of direct dialogue. We don't navigate, we converse. We formulate precise requests, receive specific answers. The machine doesn't guide us through preset menus. We interrogate it directly. It's the difference between following a marked trail and exploring the landscape with a map and compass, or to go further between consuming and creating. The GUI offers a packaged experience. The terminal confronts us with the power and responsibility to shape what we truly want. In the terminal, every word matters. A misplaced comma, a forgotten space, and the command fails. This rigidity, which many perceive as hostility, is actually a form of radical honesty. The system gives back exactly what you asked for. No more, no less. There is something deeply formative in this exercise in precision. It forces us to think before acting, to clearly formulate our intentions. It's mental gymnastics that go beyond computing, an education in clarity, patience, and awareness. We live in the age of immediacy. We want instant results, prepackaged solutions, frictionless experiences. And it's understandable, we all have complex lives to manage. But there's a hidden cost to this haste. We gradually lose the deep satisfaction that comes from true understanding. The kind of understanding that only emerges through time, attention, and sometimes enduring a bit of initial frustration. The terminal demands this investment. It doesn't offer instant gratification, but rather a growing mastery that builds over time. Perhaps it's no coincidence that the terminal is intimidating. We live in a society that rewards quick responses, multitasking, instant gratification. But real thinking, like the terminal, can't be compressed into a notification. It may sound like an exaggeration to say Linux is a state of mind, but there's truth in the idea that it represents a particular approach to technology, an approach based on transparency, on the ability to look under the hood, to modify and personalize. It's not necessarily superior to other approaches. It's simply different. And this difference is valuable. The terminal isn't an optional extra in Linux. It's the system's DNA. While Windows was designed from the start to hide complexity behind graphical interfaces and default settings, Linux starts from the opposite assumption. The user can and should understand what's happening. When you say, without the terminal, you can't use it for what it really is, you hit the nail on the head. A firewall configured through a GUI is still IP tables under the hood. System logs can only truly be read from the command line. The most refined configurations often require editing text files. The GUI in Linux is often just a visual translation of commands that already exist. Windows says, don't worry, we'll handle everything. You get a pre-configured firewall, automatic updates, and reasonable default settings. The ideal user is one who just wants things to work. Linux says, here are the tools you decide. There are no choices made for you because the system assumes you know or want to learn what's best for your specific case. The practical result is this. Using Linux without the terminal is like playing a grand piano using only three keys. Technically possible, but you're wasting the full potential of the instrument. I often notice a strange contradiction in our time. On one hand, we celebrate innovation and technological sophistication. On the other, we shy away from anything that requires more than superficial learning. It's as if we want the benefits of advanced technology without the inconvenience of actually understanding it. But understanding is freedom. Those who know how a system works can modify it, repair it, adapt it to their needs. Those who merely use it remain, to some extent, at the mercy of those who designed it. And it's not just about technology. We see the same pattern in how we consume information, in politics, even in healthcare. The fear of complexity makes us dependent on those who simplify. I'm not suggesting that everyone should become a command line expert. Everyone has their own priorities, interests, and talents. 
But maybe it's worth asking ourselves, in how many areas of our lives do we accept pre-packaged solutions without ever being curious about how they really work? The Linux terminal is just one example. It could be cooking instead of ordering takeout, repairing an object instead of replacing it, diving deep into a topic instead of skimming quick facts online. There is a certain beauty in the imperfection of the terminal. It's not intuitive, it's not always friendly, and it requires patience. But for that very reason, it teaches us something valuable about the relationship between effort and reward, between surface and depth. It's an education through imprecision that forges precision. Like learning a difficult language or reading a complex philosophical text, you struggle, make mistakes, try again. But every step forward is real, yours, earned. In a world increasingly moving toward automation and simplification, preserving space for conscious complexity may be a poetic act of resistance. Not resistance to progress, but a way of preserving the human dimension that finds meaning not only in the outcome, but in the process to get there. When I reflect on all this, I think of future generations, of what they'll make of us. If they manage to find anything at all beyond the mountains of plastic we're leaving behind as our legacy, are we so sure we're heading in the right direction? In a world where black and white have become the same, where good and bad, beautiful and ugly, mix into a bland collective mush, where everything that strikes us is instantly forgotten without leaving a single lasting mark. We've closed the doors of our souls and built walls made of appearances, labels, and empty illustrations. Linux without the terminal. Plastic bottles shipped thousands of kilometers. Green cars that generate millions of tons of CO2. More expensive, more powerful computers doing more or less the same things in designs that look more and more the same. There is no longer beautiful or ugly, good or bad, liked or disliked. There is only a sterile, amorphous flatness. And its name is mediocrity. That's why the terminal is not just a technical tool. It's a symbol of resistance to uniformity. It's the choice to keep alive distinction, precision, and the effort to understand. It's the refusal of the shapeless sludge in favor of clarity, even when clarity is harder.